Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number 28, and I'm going to discuss electrostatic energy. There are many pre videos previous to this which are relevant, and I've listed many of them on the left-hand side of your screen. The most important of which is the most previous, number 27, where I discussed the work done to move a charge. So let's begin. In the previous video, I said that when we bring a grouping of charges together, the mathematical, I suppose, expression is that we have one half, we have the sum over i, q sub i times the potential. So basically what we have is the, the, uh, the product of the charge and the associated potential, and we sum them and divide by two. Of course, if we're talking about a, a continuous distribution of charge, the sum goes from a sum to an integral. Now it's useful to manipulate this expression in order for us to investigate the storage of electrostatic energy. Because as it stands, it seems that the electrostatic energy is being stored in the charge. And we'll see in a moment that in actual fact, another way of looking at it is that the energy is being stored in the field. So before we do that, we need to do a small bit of recap. And I've done a lot of this, I've done all of this in the past, but like I said, I'm gonna recap it here. So if we look at Gauss's law in differential form, we can rewrite it so that we have an expression for the charge density. Now we have a more com complicated uh, expression to manipulate. And you can look at my videos in vector calculus for electromagnetism if you require more. So product rule three, which I discussed in my videos on electromagnetism, excuse me, vector calculus for electromagnetism, says that if we take the divergence of the product of a scalar function f and a vector function a, it's the same as the scalar f multiplied by the divergence of a and the vector a outside of the gradient of f. Also, we have Green's theorem. It's the integral over the volume of the divergence of your vector, let's say a, and the closed surface in integral of a dot with the infinitesimal surface area element dA. Note, by the way, we have the, the volume integral of the divergence of a, which in actual fact is what we have up here. Because if we integrate everything over the volume, which I've done down here, we see the actual fact we have Green's theorem. So I integrate product rule 3 over a volume and sub in for Green's theorem. So Green's theorem then allows us to, to I suppose, replace the divergence of the scalar f multiplied by the vector a with the closed surface integral of the scalar f multiplied by the vector a dotted with the infinitesimal surface area element or rearranging it, we get the following expression down here on the bottom right of your screen. Now you may or may not realize, but in actual fact, this is integration by parts. Because in integration by parts, you transfer the derivative from one function to the other, and it costs you a boundary term. So on the top right of your screen, we were in actu actual fact, we were differentiating a, but if you look at the bottom left of your screen, we're, we're no longer differentiating a. We're going to be differentiating f here, and it costs us a boundary term. So this is integration by parts. Now why is that any, any use to us? Well, let's go back to our integral form of the work done when you assemble a grouping of charges. One half the integral over the volume, rho times the potential d tau. So like I said, we have a formula for the, or an expression, excuse me, for the electric potential, and we have our integration by parts ready. So immediately I'm gonna sub in for my electric potential. So we have epsilon zero outside of the divergence of the electric field. But we can there, thereafter sub in this expression because we have it from integration by parts up here. So plug in our answer from our integration by parts and we get this particular expression here. Now it might look pretty awful. It might look like it has no particular use so far, but I can tell you that it does. Because we realize that the electric field is minus the gradient of the electric potential. And if, if you sub in for that, we get this final expression here. So that the work done is a half epsilon zero outside of a volume integral and a closed surface integral. So let's look at the closed surface integral of the potential multiplied by the electric field dotted with the infinitesimal surface area element. We know that the electric potential, it goes down to one over R, we know that the electric field goes down at one over r squared. Their product goes down at one over r cubed. 
the surface area grows at 1 over r squared. So the product of the two of these will go down at 1 over r. So if you think about it, in the limit, this surface or excuse me, this surface integral in the limit where the area goes to infinity is going to be equal to zero. So what we do is we integrate over all space because we can do that. We can always extend our integrals greater uh, or outside of our charge area because it's not going to add anything to our integrals. In this case, the surface area, um, the, excuse me, the surface integral goes to zero and we're left with the work done to assemble a grouping of charges is one half epsilon zero outside of e squared d tau. So where do we go from here? Well I promised in the previous video that we would be able to see where the electric potential energy, excuse me, the electric energy is being stored. So we've written the work done to assemble a grouping of charges is one half epsilon zero, the integral of e squared d tau. If you look at the units on this, we find that it's joules per meter cubed. So it's it, it looks to me like the, uh, the energy is being stored in the field because the last time we had charge density written here or charge written there and it looked like the energy was being stored in the charge. Here it seems like the energy is being stored in the, uh, in the field. Now in electrostatics it doesn't matter which viewpoint you take. However when you move on to uh, say let's say general relativity it's vital. It is in actual fact a, uh, a prerequisite that you say that the energy is being stored in the electric field. So that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment in the comment box below.